So welcome to what I think to be the most funnest step in the whole migration process. And I call this step the modernization step. Now that we've included TypeScript into our application and we've converted all of our code to use TypeScript code, and because TypeScript is really just a superset of JavaScript and very, very modern JavaScript, this now gives us an opportunity to just really use some nice modern constructs in our applications. So in the previous lecture, when we were componentifying our application, we started to use constructs like the ES6 class syntax, and we used other constructs like the fat arrow syntax. But we only did that for the components themselves. In this step, my recommendation is that you go through the entire application and just really start rewriting things in these modern constructs. So use classes when you want to use classes, use new constructs like the for of loop when you want to implement new modern looping techniques. And also take the opportunity in this step just to start getting rid of a few small things that make migrating uh, to Angular a little bit more pleasant. Now one of those things we need to do, and, and this is what I'm going to do initially in this step, is to uh, get rid of our ng resource. So in Angular JS, you, you may or may not have been using a resource called uh, ng resource, which is dollar resource, which is, was a really nice service when you were using APIs, kind of CRUD APIs, which followed a specific uh, format and methodology. If they did, then you could use resource and just get a lot of functionality very, very quickly, very, very cheaply. But there is no equivalent to dollar resource in modern Angular. It only exists in Angular JS. So also take this opportunity to get rid of dollar resource and replace it with something that's more appropriate for Angular. Now in Angular, although there's no dollar resource or there's no equivalent to dollar resource, it is a dollar equivalent to dollar HTTP. So the the lower level dollar HTTP service in Angular JS. So in this initial lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to replace dollar resource with the dollar HTTP because that makes it a lot easier to migrate to the HTTP service in Angular later on. Now to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class. I'm going to create a class which I'm going to mark it as export class contact. So I'm essentially going to replace this factory ng resource, which is a factory called contact. I'm going to replace it with a service called contact. Now, if you don't know what the export keyword is, again, go to my codecraft.tv site, look in the Angular course and uh, check out section two, which is the free section completely on TypeScript, where, and check out, especially check out the section called modules, where I explain kind of imports and exports. Now, the way I'd like to replace this stuff is, is I first want to create a few private variables. So I'm going to create private API root, which is going to be a string. And we're going to make that equal to our API root here. And I'm not going to add the colon ID at the end there. There we go. And I'm going to create something to hold our HTTP service. Now I'm also going to create a constructor. Now again, the way constructors work with classes is that this is going to essentially be whatever you pass into the, as a constructor body will essentially be the same as what we're passing into the function here. So essentially, this is going to be automatically injected in by AngularJS, the same way that this resource was being automatically injected in in this function object here. So that's all you need to do is just whatever you want, just have it injected in the constructor. And because we want to re refer to this HTTP in other methods in our application, we need to store it somewhere. So that's why I created this local or this class HTTP variable and I'm now going to store our HTTP service on my HTTP variable. Okay. So now what the re dollar resource uh, provided for us in AngularJS was a couple of useful functions. So we had query, get, save, update, and remove. So now we're going to need to implement those functions ourselves. So to do that, we just basically provide some functions. We're going to have query. get, save, update, and the final one is going to be delete. 
Okay. So let's now start fleshing these out. Now the query is typically passed some parameters, which we'll then pass as query strings to the API. So we're going to pass those parameters like this. So we're going to pass params. And the type of this is going to be a string, basically a map, essentially there. So to replicate this with the lower level HTTP library, we just need to pass in or call this function here. So we're going to call HTTP. It's going to be a normal get. It's going to pass it to the API root, so this one here. And we're then going to pass the parameters as params. So that's all we need to do there. So we need to do the same with get. So I'm just going to paste it in here. So very, very similar. Oh, because we also need to pass it some parameters. I'm going to pass it in the query param in the function parameters there. So it's going to pass in an ID and then it's going to pass in an optional parameter called params. It's optional. And then it's the same function call, but in addition to the API root, I'm just going to append the ID onto it there. And then we've got save. So save, what are we going to say? We're going to save some things. So we're going to save some data. I'm going to give it a type of any. And then we're just going to use post to save it. So I'm going to do this HTTP post. Again, the API route. I'm going to pass in the data that we want to save. And update is slightly different because update is we already have an ID. So we're going to be passing in some data. So again, data any. Now this data I'm assuming has an ID property. Okay, because with update, you're updating something that you already have that's already been saved. So we're going to update as the API route slash whatever ID it is, and we're going to pass in the data. And finally, we're going to have delete. Actually, it's not delete. Sorry, it's called remove. Let me change that. Remove. So again, we're going to pass it some data, some object which we want to remove. It's going to have a type of any. I'm going to assume it's going to have an ID, and then we need to issue a delete HTTP delete verb to the API route slash that ID. And so that's pretty much all we need to do. Um, it's pretty verbose, I admit, but this is what we need to do to replace our uh, ng resource with something that more lower level, but actually has a has a closer analogy to um, Angular than Angular JS. So the final thing we need to do at the end is we need to add it to our module. So we're not. Let me roll that underneath. It's not going to be a factory anymore. It's actually going to be a service. It's going to be called contact, and we're going to return the contact class there. Let me format the document. There we go. Perfect. And there we go. Now we've uh, modernized our contact resource, and we've converted it into an ES6 class with um, some really nice uh, TypeScript features. So I've showed you that we can even, we're providing types to each of the parameters, which is really, really useful. I've only done the very basic uh, types here. Uh, you could go a lot deeper if you wanted to. And types are obviously a really important feature of TypeScript and they really help solve problems uh, later on down the line. But I've just showed you the basics here, just enough to get rid of an ng resource and create a, a modernize it by using a class and a service instead.